Hey everybody, I'm Captain Tommy Scoville and you're on the lifeboat. What's happening? It's uh, Friday. Made it through the week. <clears throat> That's a good thing. The uh, I apologize. I am nine minutes late. You know what? Um, that doesn't happen really often. I promise you it doesn't. I don't I don't go on late very often. It, uh, it used to be a, um, a pet peeve of mine in the uh, very early days of the show. It used to drive, <coughs> used to drive me insane if I couldn't uh, go on on time. And today I am... Uh, I am sorry. It's on me. That's uh, that one is completely on me, but uh, I promise it won't happen very often. I don't, I honestly do not do it very often. Uh, had to get, uh, had to do your hair. Yeah, no, it, uh, it happens, especially this time of, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you all right there, Johnny Scoville. Yeah. God bless you. Plant Freak says, Plant Freak says, just a quick reminder, between the crack, we'll be uh, live streaming Steve Molesky's memorial. Uh, I and Cosmic Christie have posted the links on Facebook and on Discord. Um, Henny has it uh, to drop it in the chat as well. Um, it's going to be an opportunity for us to uh, to tag along while they um, say goodbye to our uh, to our brother, uh, Steve. So it's a it's a great it's really is a great opportunity, especially for those that uh, that knew him. He was uh, Steve was a force, and you know what? He still is a force. Mara, good morning. How are you? I'm hoping that was the Mara I was just talking to, <clears throat> or a talking ant. Yay! Look at that. Thank you, Spanx Calhoun. I'm going yard. It's my boy. Giving her a wind. No, I love the sound. It's one of my favorite sounds on planet Earth. Could you guys hear that? That one happens to be unique as heck, too, because have you noticed that it winds on the back stroke, not on the front? I know why that is. So when they made that watch, they're trying to. So that's the uh, Blanc pane. Um, on that watch, the uh, they're trying to get down to 51 parts because that's what the original swatch had. But the original swatch is a, ba a battery-operated watch. It didn't need a ton of parts, right? Now, what you got to realize is that the cannon pinion, the device that's going to come up through the middle of the watch that's going to hold the hands and the, the uh, second hand and all of that, that device is about 11 pieces normally, <laughs> right? So there's a lot of parts. There's more than that many screws in an automatic watch. But what they did in that to eliminate, so normally there's a, a gear that changes from basically so that you're going from forward to back. They just eliminated that. So now instead of, yeah, they figured, why bother? And it makes a lot of sense, really, if you're trying. Yeah, it's a two-stroke. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's a two-stroke instead of a four-stroke. Does, <laughs> does it? Well, it sounds a little bit different, too, actually. Yeah. You, know, you can almost... Yes. Wing, wing, wing. Okay. For those motorcycle people, you'll, uh, you'll enjoy that reference. For the rest of you, I'm sorry I wasted your time. So let's talk about this crap, because I'm telling you what, people. I'm not trying to beat this to death, but how can you not talk about this stuff? When do you hear everything that's going on, man? So you want the, the newest rumors? Here's the newest rumors. Do I remember the pop swatch from the late 80s and early 90s? I've got a buttload of them. Yeah, I remember pop swatch. Absolutely. For those who do not know, you popped the swatch out of a small little case. So it was on a thick, wide strap. I have the Alice in Wonderland pop swatch still in the box with papers from the 80s. Yeah. Now, I'd love to tell you that it's never been worn. However, I take it out and wear it all the time because it's the Alice in Wonderland uh, watch. Lady Fiona Crispin found it. It's absolutely one of the most unbelievable watches you've ever seen. Aaron F., I don't know if I've ever said hello to you. Welcome to the boat. If I have, sorry. Uh, welcome again. I did that once. Just once? I did it exactly face Stop. to face in New York. I said, it's good to meet you, man. And he goes, no, we met last year. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> Pulled his phone out and showed me a picture of him standing over. You know what, phone. though, man? I feel like such a First of all, how many concussions story. have you had? 50. Diagnosed or got anything? Gamer Jack, he says, uh, give it a light, guys and dolls. I love guys and dolls. My favorite musical of all time. Is it a buttload or a boatload? Asking for a friend. It's a really good question. Lemon, well played. Well, there's the boatload. Boat there's the metric boatload. There is the metric boatload. I got to start saying boatload. It's probably a much better way to say it, too, in all honesty. Oh, I love uh, I love a good uh, Aussie accent. 
Most of my friends are Aussies, for real. Kelly Girling, wow. Uh, I would have that conversation with him if, if I were you. It's going to be a bit one-sided, admittedly. But I think if you if you give him a, an opportunity, right, if you stop talking from time to time and just sit in silence, you'd be really surprised at the things that happen. I've done this. Um, I've done this often, actually, with multiple people. And uh, I, I don't know. I really find some solace in it. I'm not suggesting anything other than I find some solace in it. I really do. <laughs> you love an a, a Aussie accent as well, Kelly uh, says. You know what? Uh, you know who else does? Quibble. Okay. Quibble. Uh, Reese, Reese would swap me out for an Aussie accent in 2.2 seconds. And she's been pretty open about that. She'll, she'll let you know. Uh, a swatch was my first watch ever, says Bead Maniac. Maniac on the floor. And the in the That's tell me you just can't. Every time you hear that, is it Chris Farley? He has made that immortally his. A swatch was my first watch ever. And I used to have a pop swatch too. I think I had three different ones in my teens. Um, I had four or five swatches in my teens, but the very first one was uh, purchased for me by my sister. And uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, it, it started my watch addiction and the company got so big that they bought everybody else. I mean, it, it's swatch is the largest watch brand on earth. Um, first they bought ETA, which was the company that was making the movements to put inside their watch. They got big enough, fast enough that they just bought the company making the movements, but that company made movements for everybody, right? They, they've made millions and millions of watch movements that have gone inside everybody from Rolex to Cartier at one point or another, everybody's used, uh, an ETA movement. So, uh, after Swatch bought up ETA, they started buying up everybody else. That watch that Johnny's got on right there is the Blanc Pain Swatch. Um, and while they own Blanc Pain, Blanc Pain has never, um, they own them, right? The parent company, but Blanc Pain as a company has never put a battery in a watch. They're the only watch company that never sold out. Um, so their Swatch version is an automatic, really cool watch too. Absolutely a cool watch. 51 moving parts, which makes you the 52nd moving part. And uh, that's my lucky number, you know. Yeah, that's my lucky number. While not being born there, the Bee Gees moved to Australia and lived there at a young age. I do not condone any country that would take them in. <laughs> you know what? I love the Bee Gees, but that is a really funny line. Uh, Valerie Smith says, my first watch was a Timex that grandma wore when she was a nurse and I lost it. It still breaks my heart. Oh, bummer. I hate that. I hate the lost watch. Tell you what, though, find a picture of, uh, of uh, grandma with that watch on and send me the picture. I do this for people all the time and we'll track that thing down for you. It happens all the time. Now, let's talk about Diddy. Diddy. Yeah. Yes, he did. Uh, low life. Sean Combs, everybody says, every time I bring up his name, and someone will say it now, he's a gatekeeper. He's a gatekeeper, dude. Thank you. You're going to cut out the middleman, just uh, keep it in-house. What would I have done if I had not you know, taken that softball? I would have highlighted whoever uh, else was going to say it, because somebody was going to. And there are definitely people above him. you got to believe that, yeah? Right? Okay. The Isle of Man, famous for the Isle of Man TT and also being an island that if you take the square footage of the island, there is a business every every one foot on that island. There's literally a business every foot covering the entire island. It would be impossible. But uh, it's one of those places where a lot of people who don't like paying a lot of taxes set up businesses overseas, or so I've heard. In fact, I heard it's the best tax haven on earth. So, gatekeeper, right? So who is he keeping the gate for? Well, here's the deal. Clive Davis is a low life. I think we can agree on this, right? Everything else I say about Clyde, I'm going to go allegedly, right? But I'm not going to say that about him being a low life. This dude's a low life. Allegedly, Clive Taught this cat everything he knows. And I mean, literally, Clive likes to take pictures of people. 
and use them as leverage. This has been uh, outed recently by a couple of different um, uh, big name folks. Uh, Jaguar, is it Jaguar right? Jaguar right. Um, why don't you get lippy with me, dude? Jaguar. Uh, Jaguar has outed uh, a lot of stuff concerning uh, Clive Davis and brought up an interesting point. Clive has had two artists pass away on him, right, from drug overdoses. And in both cases, these were artists that hadn't really taken care of having their affairs in order. And in both cases, the passing of said artist was very beneficial to uh, Clive. The first of those artists was Janis Joplin. Sandy Wandy, your dad's Bulova? I have your dad's Bulova. I think I have every Bulova. <laughs> I have a lot of them. My chances are I have the, uh, the one that he had. I have, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, lots and lots is what I have the most of. The other artist was Whitney Houston. And then, right, before everything could get all smoothed out and taken care of, her daughter then passed. That starts smelling really janky. You know what I'm saying? That starts smelling really, really bad. Starts looking like Clive's maybe a low life, big time low life. And then the, the rumors have been circulating for a really long time that he prefers the, um, the affection of men to the affection of women. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Right. According to Jaguar, he is a uh, he likes being a, um, a black lady. That's what he wishes he was in life. And that's how he uh, that's how he lives and acts when people aren't around. Uh, interesting note, he had lost control of both women just prior to their death. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of truth to that. Right. Interesting. A lot of truth to that. And in both cases, um, yes, he's admitted to being by Mira Adira. Um, more recently, he's been very, very open, but for the longest time, this has been just something that everybody in the industry seemed to know. And the word is that for about five years, he had a, uh, a relationship with, um, Scummy Combs. The two of them were simpatico, ace deuce, homeboys, you know, Interesting. yeah. So. It gets weirder though, right? Now here's where it starts getting really, really odd, right? So we all know that this uh, this uh, all started blowing up because of Cassie, right? This is um, the Diddler's ex filed this lawsuit. And after said lawsuit was filed the following day, um, the Diddler, Diddler's ex. Yeah, the Diddler uh, uh, settled the following day, right? Didn't take a long time to go... I'm going to settle that. Why? Because uh, she got the goods on. Word is, she's doing the same thing he did when he was in trouble. She's working with the feds. Oh, no. Yeah, that's the word. Allegedly, allegedly, she's already working with the federal government. And my gut says, so is he. Right? I promise you, this dude isn't going to do the, um, the I'm going to soldier up routine. They say he's uh, been spotted biking and walking around uh, Miami, looking like he hasn't got a care in the world. My gut says that's probably um, not too far from the truth. See, I think this cat knows where the bodies are uh, are buried. Uh, red flags, right? Mary Deer says three of them settling the next day. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, that's a little red flaggy, isn't it? See, but. They know, they know that if they didn't settle that puppy quick, the the faster they could get that settled, the quicker they could pull it out of uh, of the uh, the zeitgeist, so to speak. Right? They didn't want that thing on my desk and everybody else's desk on the uh, right. Get that out. They don't, you know, and rumors, and you know, we know we know a good deal of what was in that, right? But I promise you, there was a bunch. Do I think the raid was for uh, leverage against him? The raid was because Little Rod, this uh, his music producer, right? She started the crap show. Then this music producer filed a lawsuit. And we know everything that's in that lawsuit, right? Because this dude ain't settling for nothing. This dude is, is putting that thing out there and it is. Here it is, right? 
they raided because everything he said in his lawsuit was RICO. All everything in there showed a recurring um, crime organization, right? A group of people involved that are getting drugs and then getting uh, young underage men and women, boys and girls, I should say, flying them into uh, Diddy's place, right? So we're crossing state lines. Yeah. So sex workers being given drugs that he's buying, right? And then pictures are being taken in blackmail. I mean, what crime haven't we done? He shot a couple of people that allegedly he shot a couple of people, right? Um, now the, uh, the Teflon thing is, is gone, right? Cassie scraped just a little bit of Teflon off. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with that whole process, but once there's a little Teflon scraped off, you might want to throw it out and get another one, right? And quick, because the uh, the cancer uh, causing crap is just going to start. And here's what's happening, people. No lie, right? Everybody involved, everybody, you want to just pick up Little Rod's lawsuit and get a look at all of the names on there and realize that every one of them has a really good group of attorneys. And they're all sitting down with their attorneys and their attorneys are going, hey, what kind of things do you think are on his cameras? Now, Diddy Dunn really screwed up, right? Diddy Dunn messed up because he hired this guy, Little Rob, to do what? Video him. <laughs> this dude was, was walking around videoing everything that was going on. So no, he's the undertaker. Oh, yeah. He knows where the, I mean, he's putting the bodies. Yeah, he was doing the digging. Wow. He documented this crap. Now... Why did they do the raids? They did the raids because when, uh, you're good, because when old Little Rod said, all right, oh, excuse me, when Little Rod gave him all of that info and he said, yeah, you know, uh, I've got video. Little Rod showed the FBI what he had, put the stuff out on the table. They looked at it and went, whoa. He said, by the way, he's recording too. This is me walking around, but he's got cameras through the whole house. So there were rooms that day that I showed you just now, off in the rooms, they were doing X, Y, and Z. Well, they wanted to go in and get what was in that X, Y, and Z. They wanted to go in and get whatever the hell that was before the diddler had the shot of destroying it. Feel me? Now, Little Rod had been kicking it with him for over a year. Over a year. Oh, my Lord. What do you think they're going to find on all the seized cell phones? I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Now, I want to tell you something about these cell phones. If you are really into watches, right? Eventually, you're going to end up buying magazines, right? That cater sp specifically to um, watch freaks. It's like watch porn, right? These are you know, 70 and $80,000 watches up to two and $3 million watches. But a couple of times a year, the magazines come out, you know, like Rob Report, DuPont Registry, these, where they just talk about watches for a month, right? That's the issue. And I buy it every single year. And inevitably, they advertise for cell phones in there that are about $6,000, right? For the cell phone. Um, and this was a few years back. But those $6,000 uh, phones are supposed to do things Jennifer takes like make sure that stuff is uh, is not going to clouds and things are scrubbed or whatever. And that's all great unless they take the phone <laughs> and then you're beat, right? So it doesn't matter what, you know, what kind of technology or whatever. If they get that stuff in their hand, you're beat. And it's going to be interesting because they took a lot of stuff out of that house, a lot. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Thank you for hitting the like button on the way in and please hit the subscribe button here. A lot of you are getting unsubscribed. A lot of you are getting unsubscribed or, or we just have gotten to a point where we park now on this number for all of eternity. And I'm cool with that, but um, I do think uh, you should check and see if you've been unsubscribed. Z-Dub, what's happening Zen Wen? I hope you are doing well. Good to see you. Threw me off when we had one years ago. Only thing that happened was stuff fell. Oh, I, uh, yeah, you're talking about a quake. I'm not sure where Johnny Scoville is. If he's not back in 30 seconds, I'm just getting rid of him. I don't want to look at the couch. 
See, I was throwing that out there thinking maybe he heard me. Uh, let's start talking about other sleaze because they have raided his house. They have gotten all of this stuff. What's Diddy's next move? Because I promise you, this cat is a billionaire and he didn't get there um, intentionally. I mean, by accident, rather. He got he got there by design, and he got there by being a bad man. Uh, VTV says, were they actually sex workers or just used it? Um, I don't know if I want to call minor sex workers, even if they were previously employed. The, uh, the sex workers were not um, the minors. The sex workers... Uh, apparently, um, there was a group of sex workers who he kept on staff and by all accounts, these were, uh, adults. Um, they were of legal age. I don't know how, you know, they, they weren't, uh, they weren't kids. The ones that were kids, uh, were not around on a full-time basis. I think these people were just being brought in, um, you know, human trafficked for all intents and purposes for these parties. And you're right. They can't be, uh, regardless of whether or not somebody hands them money at the end of the night, they're not workers. Um, uh, you know what VTV? Um, it's also pretty interesting that there's a lot of pictures of, uh, of Ashton Kutcher and, uh, and Danny Masterson and, uh, and P Diddy together. I mean, this, uh, you know, these are the kind of people that are going to, um, that are going to end up running together. Do I think Clive is the key master? Well, that's really the interesting question, isn't it? Now, he might have been, but he's a 90-year-old guy, right? And he's definitely, he's not uh, the, as sharp as he used to be, right? He's 90. Hey, Kenya, good to see you, hon. But what we do have is we got these, uh, these Carters, right? We got Jay-Z and his wife. And I want to tell you something. There's a lot of meat on that bone. There's a lot of really weird crap with that uh, whole, and this is an entire thing. I promise you, Diddy right now, this is, this guy has already allegedly shown who he is, right? I will run and cut a deal with the feds quick as you, as you possibly can. You know, that's who he is. He is the, I'm going to run and take a, take the deal. If I can get one kind of guy, he didn't get to the top by not stepping on a bunch of people. He's, He's actually bragged about guy. it. He is not a stand up guy. He's not, right? Already established that. So what do you think he's doing right now? He's trying to think to himself, who can I give him? Huh? Who's bigger than me that I can give him? Because if I can give him somebody bigger than me, I might get out of prison, right? But he's going to have to give up somebody bigger than him <clears throat> if he wants to get out of... Uh, if he wants to get out of this, he's absolutely going to have to give somebody up. Well, thank you, Kenya. I'm, I'm a fan of the hat. Kathy says, I saw a thumbnail that Beyonce left Jay-Z because she now uh, knows he's involved. I got news for you. She's involved. The reason that she'd be bailing right now is because everybody is doing what Diddy's doing right now. Who can I give up? Right? Who can I give up? I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell. Huh? I'm telling. Yeah, Maya Angelou did say that, by the way. It's a great quote. Um, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Uh, it's a, uh, and this is really going to be a golden opportunity because guess what? All of them are looking for a parachute. And I promise you, Beyonce is one of them. Now, there have been rumors going around for an eternity that he has kept her at, at uh, at bay with drugs and, uh, you know, he's not been a particularly good husband. There's words, there's uh, allegedly rumors say that he's put hands on her, right? This isn't a good dude. Allegedly. Well, um, Patty Joyce, that's a great question, isn't it? That's a great question. Why do they do the things that they do? I mean, what is it? Is it power? Is it, is it cash? Uh -huh. I wondered that. So many oh, times. I can tell you what it is. I promise you, I can tell you what it is. Because I met a couple of real weirdos in my life, right? And by that, I mean, you know a couple of the people I'm talking about. People that are no longer with us and people who disappeared or whatever. But a, a really 
Yeah, Ron Burkle's deep involved, Debbie, um, allegedly. So here's the deal. What happens when everything that you ever wanted is yours, right? What happens when every wish you ever had came true? What happens when you own your own jet? You can go wherever you want, whenever you want. What happens when you own a 300-foot motor yacht that's got 70 employees that you can fire up and take out whenever you want? Please come aboard, Cindy. What happens when the interest on your money earns you $100 million a year? For some of the people, they become benevolent like hell. You wouldn't believe it. For some people, they go around and they build hospitals and they and they take care of uh, of kids that that have issues. And you, you know, there are people that see this as this is my opportunity to make the earth a better place, right? To whatever degree they they are capable, they want to actually make the earth better. But you know what? That ain't everybody. Trust and believe that's not everybody. There are people who arrive at that and go, I've had everything. What haven't I had? Okay. I can buy anything. What can't I buy? What can I not buy? Can I buy people? Sounds disgusting, but I promise you that's what starts <laughs> to happen. That is what begins to happen. These people begin to get the mindset of, it's not fun playing with toys anymore. I have every toy on planet earth. I'm going to play with people. Don't you think that's a very small percentage of people? That Absolutely, it's a small percentage of people. Absolutely, it's a small percentage. But what happens is when you got $2 billion, right? And you're that small percentage, you're going to do so much, you know, damage and mayhem that the stories are going to be uh, told for years to come, right? The Epstein scumbags and the, uh, the Danny Masterson scumbags, even, even, you know, he obviously to a much smaller degree, but it was the same phenomenon. Here was a guy that from as old as he could be, hey, you know, he, he was doing uh, TV commercials before he could, uh, he could read and write. And he lived in a world where if he, if he wanted to do something to, to, to somebody, they couldn't call the police because that was the doctrine of their religion. So he could get away with whatever he wanted to. These people on the other coast, right, who are doing what they're doing, have so much money, okay, that they feel like whatever it is I do, I can I can pay and get get it's such uh, an abuse of the power dynamics are so skewed. It's disgusting, right? It's like I've had people like in different countries just for the channel that walk up, they're stunned that they're meeting me. Yeah, and just that, you know what I mean? I can't imagine on something on that level the kind of nefarious crap you can you can get away with. Well, and here's the thing: you are. Uh, a, um, a known human being, right? But what you don't bring to any uh, any kind of meeting like that is the ability to say to the person, "I'll make you famous, right? I will make you, I will make you rich, or or I'll make sure you're not rich." There are great stories throughout the industry yeah. of somebody that chapped Beyonce the wrong way, and she said to her husband, "Ruin that bitch for real," right? There's a lot of that going I've on. Heard that. Yeah, no, there are stories. I, I was deep diving this family for the last two days, man. You must have heard the same thing. The Carters are not nice people, man. They're not. And she's kind of got this reputation, right, where she's the victim, you know, in this situation. And we all kind of feel bad for uh, for Beyonce because Jay-Z cheated on her. And, you know, she came out with that album. What the hell was the name of that album? I don't know. But... You know, we all kind of fell for it, didn't we? We felt bad for Beyonce. It was a bummer. Turns out maybe we shouldn't be. <laughs> Turns out maybe she's not as big a victim in this as everybody wants to crack her out to be. Hello, Mr. Johnny Hot Pants. Whoa, hey, how are you? The uh, Lemonade. That was the name of the album. Lemonade. Well, that's cool. Workers in there. <laughs> Beyonce's sister whacked Jay-Z in the elevator. Kind of sounds like a uh, the beginning of a film by Quentin Tarantino. What she did do was kick him and smack him a few times. And uh, while a uh, security guard kind of held her, she got a couple of kicks in. One looks like it might have actually got the... Um, got him in the uh, in the junk. Beehive equals hive mind. I could no do the therapist approach. 
sketch. And sketch. This is a perfect therapist sketch. It is a nice therapist sketch. It is, to be sure. Comments. How many ladies and singers from the 90s that disappeared? Jay-Z killed Destiny Child. A lot of truth to that. And you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to know, how old was, uh, was Beyonce when the two of them got together? Let's keep that real. Because I'll tell you what, he slipped up on Charlie Rose pretty good. <clears throat> you might want to go and take a look at that one. It's a good one. He dropped the year, and Charlie Rose was waiting on it. Like he's no slouch. Charlie Rose was uh, was baiting that trap because uh, the story is they met when she was about eighteen or whatever, and then they they uh, waited about a year. You can hear her uh, her talking on an interview where she goes, "We weren't in any hurry or anything else." Well, I mean, you know, no, you weren't, because by then you'd been together about six years. By all accounts, uh, their relationship started depending on what time of the year when she was fifteen or sixteen depending on what time of the year they actually met. And when Charlie Rose kinds of calls it on him, calls him on it, he literally does one of these. I, uh, yeah, I don't know what I met her whenever the math adds up. Like that's literally how he, and, and people in the, in the audience laugh. Ain't nothing funny about that, man. Right. That's a felony. What year was that video? That interview? That was a couple of years ago. I mean, today's a, oh, yeah, so different. it'd be a little different if he did the interview today. <laughs> I don't think he's doing any interviews today. Lots of rich folks are seeking the fountain of youth by using children in ways you don't want to hear, says Cindy Collins. And you know what? Um, there's a lot of talk about such things. I'd rather do push-ups. Oh, just that you're spicy. She didn't literally mean your pants. You're just kind of spicy. Oh, he's spicy. Make no mistake. So, if he started messing around with this chick when she's 15, okay? I don't care if you got $2 billion. You know, you need to go away. That's, there's something really, really wrong with that. Let's not forget Jay-Z was sleeping with rapper Foxy Brown. I just like saying Foxy Brown, to be really honest with you. Dig that. Uh, when she was only 14, he was helping her with her career. I think he's helped a lot of people with their career. Career. <laughs> uh Layla, you got me on my knees. Uh, I never felt sorry for her. She sings about being strong and taking no hint. And he'd walk away from uh, uh, from a cheater. Yeah, she'd walk. In reality, she stands by him and keeps quiet and enjoys monetizing their dirty laundry. Interesting. Love the take. I really do. Kathy says, wasn't Cassie underage when uh, she first got with Diddy? My understanding is... Um, that both of them, Michelle, that's a great one. both of them are pretty fond of people that, um, well, uh, are still in high school, right? If you have not cleared home ec class, I don't think they want to date you, at least starting that way. And by all accounts, um, they started, uh, started cheating on um, Beyonce uh, a couple uh, weeks after they got married. It's um, yeah, pretty ugly stuff. But again, we end up with the same kind of a dynamic, right? You get this dynamic where the people at, uh, who are at the top are wielding unlimited power, right? Um, these, these stories, like allegedly, allegedly, Diddy took uh, somebody who played at the Super Bowl uh, to the hospital not for falling down, right? But for something other than that. And uh, his mom had to come and get him out of the hospital, right? This is something that everybody in the industry talks about. Well, her her mom didn't go, I mean, his mom didn't go to the cops. His mom didn't press charges. But people came rolling in and said, we're going to make your son the biggest star that ever walked, right? We're going to make your son huge. And sadly, I think that there have been a lot of instances of things that happen really like that. And that's really gank. Fancy Nancy, thank you. I really appreciate you. I'm so glad you're here. I mean that. You know, VTV says, sounds familiar. You can't get to the top and stay at the top without making some shady moves. You know, I think that in some industries, it really kind of seems that way, doesn't it? I mean, the top top, 
You know, the people that it seems like when you talk about these guys, like who are the kings of that business? Honestly, if I said, who are the kings? You'd, you'd say probably Jay-Z, right? Got a couple of billion dollars. And then you got uh, Diddy, right? You're talking about two moguls, right? These guys are the real deal powerhouses. You think either of them are good dudes? Would you want either of them uh, dating your daughter? Kanye is wacky, but he only got hospitalized after he started talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, earthquake in New York City? I'm looking for it. 4.8? Well, I'll be damned. What? I'm looking at that. Oh, oh, there is a... Oh, and he finds it. 4.7 rocks the tri-state area. That is not a joke. Jeremy Shelton says, Britney is a prime example. Use them and toss them aside when they can't help you anymore. Oh. Now she's a mess. She's a hot mess. And, and, it, and it's a bummer because you're, you're, you're right in so many ways. And I'll tell you something. You know what really should, should make you angry if you're here on the lifeboat? Huh? Here's what should make you angry if you're on the lifeboat. How long do you think Clive Davis has been using the same dope dealer? For real. He's been, he's been bringing dope or arranging dope, allegedly, for his musicians since the 60s. You think he goes through different dope dealers? No, that dope dealer is the happiest guy on planet Earth. What do you do? I am a dope dealer to the uh, to the stars. Been selling, that, that dope dealer has been slinging to Clive for a lot of years, right? Well, then how is it sometimes they OD? You would, you would think that guy would be getting a really good supply. Well, that's it. At least twice they seem to have OD'd, maybe three times. However, all of those ODs seem to have been at really well, there, perfect timing. There are certain people that don't want to mention their name in foreign politics. If you get around them, you sort of end up unaliving yourself. There's a lot of them. <laughs> and maybe they're the, you know, look, there's, there's a pattern here. What's happening? Yeah. A bit. No, I, I, it, it is, uh, yeah, Britney's family enslaving her is dark. But you know something, people? It's It's bizarre, right? It's bizarre. I can't imagine what... I can't imagine what, uh, say, a Whitney Houston, right, as a as a entity, right. I think about protecting the brand, right. I wouldn't want to come out here and say anything offensive about anybody or anybody's beliefs or anything, because I would want to protect the 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 Tommy Scoville name, right. And it's a nothing. It's just that I got my guy with a YouTube channel, but for somebody like Clive Davis. What would someone like that do to protect the name of an artist? Right? Think how much money that artist is worth. They're, they're pimps is what they are. They're pimps. They're pimps. They will do anything, right? Anything. But sadly, you, you would think, oh, man, so these artists that can make you all of this, you must take care of these people. But that's not it. They look at these artists like, you know what? We give them auto tune. We give them whatever. I can go. I can walk out on the street right now and pick the next rock star. I truthfully believe that that's the attitude. Diddy has alluded to things like this. He said the last thing in the world you wanted was somebody with talent, because somebody with talent will go out and do it on their own. You find the right person and you create that image or whatever, and they need you because they don't have the talent. How does that make you feel about the crap you're listening to? Do, 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 do. Diddy's son, King Combs. Classy. King Combs is being sued for S assault during a 2022 yacht party. I uh, I don't know of this. I do trust you, Layla, but I do not know of this. So I'm going to throw the allegedly, Layla says. Um, I, uh, I don't think I'd be surprised. Sadly, I don't. I think that we're going to see Oh, no, it's just a, another brick in the wall. I think we're going to see bricks start flying out. You ever see, uh, like, water as it takes a dam apart or whatever? Yeah. It's just going to start blasting. We're going to see this thing start to come apart. And we're going to see everybody running for, oddly enough, a lifeboat. Right? A lifeboat. 
And what we're going to see is, uh, I think we're going to see um, wife leaving husband. <laughs> I think we're going to see a lot of people saying, I saw a lot of things, man, but I wasn't involved. Hey, Jen Miller, good to see you. I was there. I saw it, but I wasn't involved. I saw this, this, and this, but I wasn't a part of it. I think it's like going to the Epstein Island saying I didn't do anything. You didn't know what was going on. Yeah, the difference is this. You don't go there to land the beach. Yeah, the difference in this one versus Epstein, right, is that in the in the Epstein case, although there were some actors or whatever that that went uh, to the island, and we wanted to know more about that. You know, we think that you know maybe the uh, former president or whatever was down there doing this or doing that. With the Diddy thing, right? There's a there are so many players involved in this. It's not just a it's not a, a situation like Epstein where if you were to cut the head off of this animal, everything goes away. It isn't that way, man. There's a lot of people involved in this, man. A lot of people involved in this. Um, Bridget, I uh, I I came across this last night. They said that. They said that Whitney was supposedly getting sober and singing uh, her last album, uh, Jesus Before Her Death, and Clive's party uh, went on as uh, her body was still in the hotel. Yeah, I think you and I probably uh, read some of the same stuff. Uh, it, it really, a lot of people in the, uh, in the industry, a lot of people that knew um, all the parties involved are really disturbed at how Whitney left Earth. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't smell right to a lot of people. And I, I don't know. Oh, Susanna, good to see you. Oh, don't you crack on me. Looking good and green. It's, um, we're going to, Diddy has a substantial drug problem. He has a really bad drug problem. He does. Jonathan has a rhetorical, I love rhetorical questions. Epstein, Cosby, Masterson, R. Kelly, Diddy, Cuba, G Gooding Jr., etc., etc., etc. Without conscience, destroying people, disgusting, deplorable, open secrets. Who else is carrying on? Yeah. Well, you got to throw Oprah in the Oprah's in the mix. You do need to throw Oprah's in there. Either. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Jay Z. Uh, there are. Yeah, uh, Oprah seems to really be friends with a lot of dirtbags. I'll tell you what, Oprah's friends with a lot of dirtbags. You know, is what it is. We can. Uh, well, he has his own Ghislaine, Cindy Collins. Yeah. yeah, he has his own Ghislaine. He may have a couple. Well, he's got one. I can't think of her name off the top of my dome, but somebody's going to put it up there for me. But she, he has his own Ghislaine Maxwell. He has his own uh, little procurer person. He's got, I'm telling you, this is a RICO case, right? The reason this is taking so long, they went and got all the evidence because all of the evidence makes the case bulletproof, Right. Now what they're going to do is they're going to go and say, all right, who are we going to charge with all this? For real. How are we going to, Tommy always needs a tissue, bro. Always. This is what I sound like. Nah, I wouldn't do any friggin' good. I mean, honestly, look, I got one right here. It doesn't, uh, I can do this. It, it is a perpetual, never ending. It's just one of those things. Um, yeah, where there's smoke, there's fire. It would be, it's, it's hard. It's hard to say. Nah, maybe they only meet once a year and, and you know, they don't see this. I, I don't, I don't buy that. You know what I mean? It's a lifestyle. It's the, who they are. Uh, our friend, the OT8, mm. right? You know his lifestyle. He, by the way, he doesn't do anything like that, but he's got a very unusual lifestyle. How long did it take for you to know he had an unusual lifestyle? Eight minutes. Right. I mean, honestly. But, but then he would remind me every time we were together. Because he's he would remind me of the weirdo that he was. Honestly, every single time. Every single time. And by the way, yeah, he was pretty weird. I mean, he, everything he was into was consensual, oh, but yeah. he was a weirdo. For sure. He, he said some very unusual things. Yeah, nothing illegal. Just. You know what, Mighty Unicorn? That's a great comment. It really is. That is a great comment. Because that's what happened, right? It's so sad that people can go to the point where other people are not human. They're just toys. That's what's going on. Chess These people board, are playing. Yeah. These people are playing some really serious games with people and they just simply don't care. Trace, the ace. Well, three card mommy, chase the ace, follow the queen. Thank you so much. 
Welcome to the boat. I've never said hello to you. Allow me to. Hello again. About Celine? Which Celine? Which Celine are we talking about? Uh, -da -da. Oh, no. And what about Celine Dion marrying Rene Abergeois? Right? Talk about grooming. She was 14 when he started managing her. Maybe I'm wrong. Hope I am. What do you think, Johnny Scoville? Is she signed, wrong? I signed a piece of paper. I can't talk about this on camera. That's not even funny, is it? No. We worked with them. Never met him. You didn't? Oh, no, I didn't. Even. Yeah, you did. What are you talking about? <laughs> Boy, you did take a bunch of shots to the head. I yeah. forgot about that. But they weren't together when I met him. They were apart. They weren't together. And uh, Tommy Matola and Mariah. That was creepy. Um, listen, the Celine Dion, Renee's gone. Mm, I know it. He's gone. I get that. I promise you. Something shady is going on. Celine's mom intervened and made him wait till she was 18. It's in the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is. No question. No question. Wait, is Nico uh where's Nico at? That path lies madness. Just keep looking forward. Don't look back. I'm telling you, I've been there and done that. Usually catch us on the replay. Well, I'm glad that you're here. I it's really... cult behavior, everything from money and pleasure, my unicorn, you're right. Well, I want to tell you something. And I wanted to wait. I was really going to wait until we had like 10 minutes left. Right? Because this is just, you know. But allegedly, hey, um, I haven't seen uh, Brazy Girl this morning. Hopefully she is unblocked. Uh, if not, I'm sure she'll reach out. you block her? Uh, I did not. Someone else did. Do you think these kind of people are born this way or with power, money, and drugs, they just become disassociated to everyone and everything? That's such a great question. That is such a great question. And it is the eternal question, is it not? If you think of the kids of like, think about uh, uh, Will Smith. Uh -huh. He's sort of a weirdo. But his kids, but listen, his kids were born into that. If you don't think they had a, a like a narcissistic, like ever since they were this big, yeah. they knew yeah. that they're different and they get what they want and they have a sense of entitlement. That that is generational. And I think if they, when they grow up, what do you think their kids are gonna be like? Or maybe um, the pendulum will swing the other way around and they'll see. Well, you know what? It's it's odd because you can see families where you know that they divide the fortune up among eight grandkids, right? right? And they all just get you know, $600 million or whatever. There's always that grandkid that's like, nah, right? Who cares? Right. What do you do? I'm a carpenter. Like, right. like nothing, the money means nothing. Um, Dennis says, I think it's the money. Here's what, here's what I think. I think if they didn't have money, right? They'd be victimizing people and they'd be doing the same thing on a much smaller scale, right? And they'd probably be getting in trouble for it because people wouldn't give them a pass because they can rhyme, right? Or whatever, you know. The, uh, they, they happen to be doing, right? An actor or an actress or whatever. Um, but my humble opinion is that uh, these are people that are sick, right? They're not right. There's something wrong with these people. Now, give them a billion dollars, right? And then see what happens. Very often, when you get that kind of a personality and you put them into an up and coming or a burgeoning uh, a new industry, they're going to step on the throat of anybody they have to, to get to the top. You also have to realize that this was a really bizarre industry. Anyway, this was an industry that was born out of gangs, right? Keep it real. This was born out of gangs. Now we're shocked when they're banging, right? They're gang bangers. They are, right? This industry really is, is not, we're not talking about rockabilly or country music or whatever. This was gangster rap, okay? It's not a clever name. These guys were gangsters. Well, if you remember, for those of you really young, right? They had that East Coast, West Coast thing going on. You remember? Well, East Coast yeah. and West Coast. We, we were taking sides. Johnny Scobo was pretty much ensconced on the uh, on the East Coast uh, guys. Uh, what, what, the Biggie's crew. Did I even say that right? 
Was that the Eavesdrop? Is that the right curve? I don't know. I don't know if Biggie was East Coast or West Coast. I just thought it sounded funny. But I don't know anything about it. Or I didn't until this started. I really didn't. I think I think that this is absolutely a, a fact. Sweet Koala says uh, they feel superior to other people. Godlike. Yeah, they do. And and they start doing this this thing where you know what I I have gotten to the point where look at me man right look at me Auntie Wombat says the money exacerbates hey I haven't done that since high school I'm just kidding the money just exacerbates an already present uh, issue people like that were going to be abusers one way or another <laughs> the money and the fame just uh, allow uh, the money and fame just allowed gave them a bigger and more quilling pool uh i think that that's probably a, a a pretty solid comment there auntie wombat you know i haven't seen my auntie wombat in years remember auntie wombat let's talk to uncle wombat a couple weeks ago yeah uncle wombat actually called me yesterday odd money well, accumulated too easily it. can create a corrupt yeah no it can um trust the farians Biggie, East Coast, Tupac, West Coast. Thank you. I knew that. I knew that. You'll see I got it right. I was I was a fan. Um, Brittany, you're right. I do have to watch it. I'm not very good at this. I have to watch this. You're right. And I'm going to, I promise. Kathy says, I like Tupac. I used to smoke Tupac a day. You know what? We worked in a farm room. Do you remember that? We had a, a girl that was pregnant that was smoking. And she was trying to find, ask everybody if they come up with a name for her baby. I <laughs> do. Put names in a hat. And Nicotina. Nicotina. And Tupac <laughs> the two were two of the names that people chose. I wonder who did that. I don't know. Who, who would have put that in the box? <laughs> Two pack Nic Nicotina. Nicotina. Well, we didn't know if it was going to be a boy or a girl. Maybe we. Don't put we in there. I don't know what you're talking about. I had nothing to do with that. Question If found guilty, what would P. Diddy's paperwork get him in a California prison? Worse than R. Kelly? Uh, Guess we. what? He's going to the feds. He's not going to a California prison. If he was going to a California prison, he'd be in a lot of trouble with his paperwork. That said, he uh, he might not be in trouble because he is not. I can't speak to what the, the, the brothers are going to do to him when they get in there. Have I ever seen the series BMF? Um, Sorry. I do know this. I do know that Meech, right, uh, was um, tied to uh, uh, the Diddler, right? The two of them apparently became friends, apparently, allegedly, before they, uh, before, Big Meech got busted and sent to the feds. Did time with Big Meech on three different yards. He and I kind of, we we uh, we ran the same yards together uh, for a long time. But um, Meech is in the feds. So uh, he could end up probably on the same kind of yard that, that Meech would be at, which would be an FCI. Uh, maybe he could even end up on the same yard. Maybe Meech take care of him. Uh, Diddy, I don't think, um, you know, the, the the blacks and whites run a completely different car. You know, um, and how they deal with all of that stuff is different. It's really different, you know, with every race. So I can't really speak to how they how that would uh, work out. But um, Brazy is here, but still blocked. Calhoun, if we could look for Brazy, uh, girl, when you get a sometimes chance. Sometimes when you unblock somebody, it takes four, 24 to 48 hours before it takes. Yes. Sometimes when you unblock somebody, it takes 24 to 48 hours. Which is hours. weird because sometimes it doesn't. It, sometimes it doesn't. I've only unblocked two people ever. You know, I thought it was one. Uh, oh, noise opera is one. Uh -huh. And he might, he may be the only one. No, there isn't another one. He no, because I think I may have blocked somebody. I did. No, I blocked Chad Matthews by accident. Ah, I got you. I Jill Judd says, did you mention Quincy Jones? I saw his name come up yesterday and was so disappointed. Maybe I'm naive, but I thought he was better than this. I hope it's not true. I haven't mentioned Quincy Jones. I know what you're talking about because I saw... Uh, there, his name did come up. Uh, I'm holding off on uh, on that until I see something. Um, You're deep I like the same to, stuff. What we're deep diving the same stuff. Yeah, I like to I like to see a couple of different people beat on somebody before I start thinking that that maybe there's a chance it's a fact. 
just because there's been some um, some odd stuff. Creepy old lady says, was Clive responsible for Whitney getting on dope? The gossip has always blamed it on Bobby Brown, but Clive lost money when Whitney couldn't sing anymore. Dropped her like a hot potato. Uh, the word is at the end, um, you know, there was a lot of auto tune. There was a lot of stuff going on because she had abused herself pretty good. But toward the end, she was really coming back. Um, but I don't know if he was responsible for it. He sure as hell facilitated it. They seem to do that often. They don't seem to uh, to call in people, uh, you know, to try to help people get sober. They seem to call people in that want to uh, help them get high. So, uh, but Breezy, do know that I was here looking for you and uh, making sure that you know you're not you're not forgotten. I love you, girl. I wouldn't I wouldn't let that happen. Uh, Whitney was a test case for how to proceed with the likes of Brittany, Casey, and uh, or Cassie rather, and Beyonce. Yeah, I think that's a that's a pretty good take right there. And so Clive started originally with Aretha Franklin. You know that was that was his first really huge discovery, and uh, boy, he handled a lot of other huge artists. Clive handled the Dead. You know, yeah. Clive handled the Grateful Dead. Not not for you know. Not for nothing. <laughs> Not for all their career, but. Yes, Quincy was associated with Scientology for a while. That is a fact. That is a fact. Mara says, Diddley isn't acting like a man who's afraid he's going to jail. Um, well, no, there's two reasons that that could be. Number one, I promise you that his attorney told him, do not look like you're freaked out. Right. You got to look like you have got nothing to do with any of this. Right. Absolutely. Um, uh, Kenya, I think even uh, even prior to that. Uh, or no, maybe not prior, but same generation, I guess, maybe a little bit before that. Jerry Lee Lewis um, married a 13 year old. Wasn't uh, Jerry was Killer's cousin? So. Well, it was his cousin. No, but you know, but here's the thing: that day they just looked. Everybody knew. Everybody knew that was in the papers. He he married his cousin. I mean, it destroyed his career, but he was in love. He didn't help the family either. Um, Zeppelin was uh, absolutely with underage girls. The Stones were absolutely with underage girls and boys. Um, this has been going on. Uh, it's not new. To be sure, it's not new. I think what we have here that makes it unique is that. They were, um, these girls are being smuggled across state lines and planes and drugged and filmed. Now, I'm not suggesting that they wouldn't have been doing the same thing had the internet been what it is or, you know what I'm saying? Different times, but it's certainly happening right now with, uh, with these people. And it is a, um, it seems to be a recurring criminal uh, operation that uses underage girls uh, to, to get uh, people on film doing things that they should not have done. It was his cousin, yeah, uh, doing things on film that they know that they should not have done, and then they use that film as leverage. David Bowie, yep. Yeah. Loretta Lynn was married at 13 or 14. Yep. Yeah. To a coal miner's daughter. No. <laughs> to a coal miner's daughter, didn't she? No, yeah. it wasn't about Loretta Lynn. Who sang that? That was her. Was it? Yeah. That's right. Do, do, do. Kill who's. It is disgusting. It absolutely is. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Uh, I think what really is going to make this one so much more unique is that um, is that we're going to see a lot of uh, of the fact that this was this was being done as part of a business. This was part of a business model. Boy, it's jacked up, isn't it? But it's part of a business model. Most of my grandparents' generation was hit on and married around uh, or before the legal age of consent by men at least 10 years older. And everyone was just okay with it because it was normalized. 
Um, yeah, this is this is what I like to call the back then phenomenon. Very often we like to judge people and things, you know, by the uh, by the standards of today, right? Um, you know, versus the back then phenomenon. Back then it was not considered very odd if you were 20 to be dating a girl that was 16 or 15, right? That's pretty uncool now, right? That's not something that would be considered uh, back, cricket. Their defense is, is thin in court. Yeah. 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 It's weird. The things are different, man. The farm, a lot of people, they have farms. They want to have 25 kids. So it would help, you know. Yeah. You wanted, you wanted to start off uh, getting that, your farm hands early. And if you're, you know, yeah, I'm not even going to. Uh, it was a bit odd if it was your cousin, says Shannon Smith. Yeah, well, you know. He didn't you know. kill himself. Look at that. Bring down his dirty. Well. Um, It'll be on a button soon. Yeah, that could be on a button soon, right? Diddy didn't didn't uh, off himself. We could be seeing that. I hope not, but. Um, Jennifer takes says you have to wonder just how many secrets Scientology is holding for these people. Yeah. They're, uh, well, they're good at keeping secrets, right? They really are. Think of that, that whole, that whole cult is just based on here. Come tell me your secrets. I'm going to record them. All right. Hey, have you had any thoughts about, uh, you know, sleeping with your neighbors or doing any of that? What's that? I had an itch. I got it. Did you need me to, where we're at? Right. Another side, lower. There you go. Nice. Got the foot going. I got you. Nice. Nice. That's always the good Thank stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm there for you. If nothing else, I'll scratch your back. You scratch my back. Just like two peas in a pack. Something like that. I don't remember. Jennifer says, get it. If Diddy did this 60 years ago, you think society would be okay with it? Brianna, that's an interesting question. I think they'd be more okay with it than they are today, right? Uh, Johnny, when you weren't looking, Tommy Cat boxed you. Oh, that's not nice. You outed me? You're just going to tell on me like that? Okay, I see how it is. Mark that down, Calhoun. Just me being me says, no, my back needs scratching. Well, I can't really help you from here. You know what I mean? Like... V. Hendricks said that makes my back itch a little. <laughs> that actually uh, makes sense to me. Info Dump Truck says marrying a cousin is fine as long as the family doesn't do it too regularly. The genes are different enough as long as it's rare. Now, do you get together and have that family meeting? When's the last time one of us boned right. another, a family member? Can we do this again? Uh, let's see. Your, it's like leap year your every... aunt Liz, uh, that would have been uh, the summer of, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, it's interesting, but no, I think you are right in terms of genetics. Um, I think about where we grew up and I think about if I was single, if you were single there and you and like, what would you do about like dating? Like, what would you do? Have you ever thought about that? Say that one more time. Like, like we left group you know graduate high school i've lived in 25 places you know 10 different states all over the country and, and, and imagine if you stayed there a lot of our friends did not move right so they had gopher they just they yeah. stayed there. well if you were single what would you what's the dating pool there is no dating pool oh yeah everybody that i know that stayed there married someone i know that stayed there Whew. yeah that's uh, that's, 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 you should keep doing that in uh, 15 years. Uh, we're having that meeting at the family gathering. Uh, I'm serious, man. You no, I, see I see where you're going with that. I see where you're going with that. Uh, there's a movie with Dennis Quaid and uh, Renona Ryder about Jerry Lee Lewis. What happened to Alfred? Oh, Alfred. I know Alfred. Alfred sorry, I, I go by his Christian name. You're gonna throw me off. I know a bunch of Alfies. Uh, I learned from you that sober uh, equals feelings. Makes sense why all this evil mm-hmm. makes us so angry and sad and overwhelmed at times. Yeah. A lot of people don't pay attention to any of this. And uh, I would have to wonder why. That's a great comment. Damn, that's a good comment. People all the time say to me stuff like, they go, I don't know why you care about any of that. Who cares? Right? What difference is it? It's got nothing to do with me. Who cares? And I'll tell you something. That is a that is the mindset of a lot of people here on planet Earth. I think when you come out of, uh, of addiction and, you're, uh, and all of your... Um, 
emotions are on fire, right? All your emotions have just come back to life. We do find things like this a little bit um, unsettling. We do tend to get a little bit more involved emotionally in things. Patty, that just makes sense. Shannon Smith says, ignorance is bliss to a certain extent. You're right. I agree with you. There are things I wish I could uh, take the blue pill, right? <laughs> I wish I could blue pill myself on a few things. Ooh, B. Hendricks. That is such a great way to put it. Your care comes back. Oh, Mary Jones. Uh, not only did the doctor have a hand in overprescribing him drugs, but there were multiple doctors who were overprescribing him drugs. Attack one, attack two, and attack three. He would have wow. his drugs brought to him in little manila envelopes. It was such an unbelievable amount of dope he was doing. It was crazy. Kenya says, when I was in high school, I definitely was going after older men. Uh, have you noticed the gray in the beard, Kenya? It's starting to come in. Mm -hmm. eh? I stopped dying it. Found out that uh, I'm an older man. I'm the older brother. Do you know Just what? Saying. Look at this. Look at this. Jeremy Shelton says you can build a thousand bridges, but then you hook up with one cousin and they don't call you Bob the Bridge Builder. <laughs> oh, it's one of my favorite go-to jokes of all time. Dennis says, I am an Elvis fan and full of useless information. <laughs> Good, Kenya. Vlad. Love you. Um, I'm a big deal in these YouTubes. That's right. Matrix Rabbit gets it. Have you, do you watch the YouTube? Kind of a big deal on that YouTube. <laughs> oh, it's great. Makes me laugh. Spanx Calhoun. How are you? That's right. Look at that. It's a whole lot of Scoville. Doing all right. How are you? Doing good. All right. You're supposed to, you're supposed to give it to uh, Spanky, but uh, yeah, we had the wave going. Oh, you blow it. Yeah, no, you're too late. All right. No, you didn't even get off the screen. Know. You know what? Step into my office because you're fired. You're worthless. Sorry, Calhoun, it's your uncle. Yeah, there you go. That's better. There you go. Little That's effort. The, little effort. He got it. Spanks hand up. He got it. He's got, no, wrong way, Spanks. We are. We need to work on this, people. Yeah. They, we, you need yeah. to go the other way. I think it's different on your screen than it is on my screen. He's the, not particularly bright. The pressure's me. intense. I can't begin to tell you. <laughs> You know, the, the problem with uh, with three Scovilles is there's not usually two solid minds among the three Scovilles, right? I'm That'd not blaming you. I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming him either. I'm just saying that betwixt the three of us, I think we got about two solid minds, give or take. What was the last time you said betwixt? Not you. You said all the time. You. We don't say betwixt enough as a group of, as a people. I drop a betwixt. You know it happens frequently. But... We're losing that. It's one of those words that's kind of going away, the Twix. Well, I think if we don't you keep do it in the part. limelight, we're going to lose it, people. We've seen that with words already. Uh, we, we can work this out. The wave thing going? Right, the wave. The muscle wave. I haven't been in the gym in like a week and a half, but it's okay. It is such a handsome boat. And by that, I mean the people in the boat, not the people up here. All right, people. We will be doing more boating today. You have my word. Uh, you know what? Kirsten and Melinda sums it up by saying, Betwix is too lovely a word it is. to be lost. Do you agree, Calhoun? How do you feel about betwixt? And the way she spelled it was beautiful. She's played before. She's had clearly. All right. Anybody? Now let's stay here just long enough that they wonder whether or not we've frozen. All right. That's a wrap, people. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville. I don't know where the uh, cat is, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.